All right, YouTube. You're one of the best. You got the best. The hottest band in the world. Curse! Ah. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Just having a little fun with you. <laughs> Welcome to Physical Format Rock and Roll, where we talk about all things rock and roll and classic metal. And as you can probably guess from our intro and our attire, Today we are talking about KISS. This is a band uh, that we all love. I'm Gary. I'm Alex. And I'm Brady. So since I was going to have both uh, my sons here as my co-hosts today, we thought we would talk about KISS because like I said, we all like it. And KISS is a band that uh, I'll probably be talking about again on this show. Uh, in a, in another format of, or so. So we tried to think of something, well, what's something we can talk about with KISS besides maybe, you know, if we, if we would do our top three albums, uh, they might all be different and this show could be two hours long. <laughs> and so to shorten it a little bit, we thought, what topic can we use? And what we decided to do was each of us pick a KISS album uh, that means something to us for some particular reason, for some special reason, uh, whether it's that time period, the album that got you into KISS, whatever it was, uh, whatever's going on, something that, uh, an album that means something to you for some reason. So that was what we decided to go with tonight. And we'll start off with Brady over here in his pick. Yeah, so um, this was kind of hard for me. Uh, Kiss is probably my favorite band of all time. Um, it was the first concert I ever went to. I think it was the first concert Alex, or first rock concert, I should say, um, that we ever went to. So Kiss means a lot to me. Um, I love this band, so this was a hard choice for me. But I decided to go with Psycho Circus. You can see the, the cool changing cover there. Um, I'm sure you hardcore KISS fans out there are familiar with this album, but it came out in 1998. Um, when this album came out, I would have been about five years old, so pretty young, and, and that's why this album does mean so much to me. This is really the first KISS album that I listened to. Um, you know, I had heard some KISS songs growing up, just in the house, obviously, um, you know, with our dad being a big KISS fan, we were familiar with KISS, but this was the first album I really ever listened to. Um, and I think what piqued my interest when I was a kid, um, I still remember we had a VHS tape of the Psycho Circus music video. And it had a pair of 3D glasses that went along with it. Pretty cool music video. Um, but, you know, as a little kid, I thought that was just the coolest, coolest <laughs> thing in the world. Um, and then I saw this album, thought it looked awesome. Um, it's a great album to me, too. It's not my favorite KISS album of all time. It's not their best album of all time, but it's a really solid album from start to finish. Um, kind of the feel that I got with this album, um, I feel like maybe they were trying to go with a Destroyer 2.0 type thing with this album. It was the first album with the four original members back um, since uh, Dynasty, right? Yeah, um, I mean, they were on the cover of Unmasked. But right. as I'm sure most people know, Peter was already out of the band pretty much by that time. He doesn't play on that album at all. Yeah. Yeah, so the first real album with the four members back since um, since that Dynasty album. So um, obviously I'm sure there were a lot of expectations um, coming back with the four original members. And I think for the most part, this album delivers. Um, it's got the title track Psycho Circus on there. If you're not familiar with that song and you're a Kiss fan, listen to it. Um, it's a classic Kiss song to me. Um, they still play it live quite a bit as well, um, but that's just a, a great intro to this album. Um, the album overall, um, I think there's one song from Ace and one song from Peter on this. They've got a, a song where they all sing together, um, but the the uh, Ace song, Into the Void, I think is a great Ace Fraley song. Um, it's got a, a great guitar riff in that song. Um, it's, to me, you know, one of Ace's better songs. Um, for sure. And then Peter's song on the album, um, I Finally Found My Way. Uh, I, I think in ways he was trying to recreate death with that song. It just, it kind of missed for me. Um, if you like that song, that's cool. But it's just, it, it, to me, it, it missed. It was a swing and a miss on that. Um, but for the most part, the album is great. Um, 
they've got a song on the album um, called We Are One, um, which you know I know we had discussed um, means a lot to all of us. It's really, to me, a, a love song to their fans. Mm -hmm. um, there's, you know, there's a line where, where Gene talks about, he's looking into the crowd and he sees his face staring back at him. We are one. I think if you're a hardcore Kiss fan, um, you really like that track. Something that resonates with you, right? Yeah. 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 As a fan. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, of course, you know, you, you, you find uh, the whole thing, um, like, you know, the, the album you talk about, well, uh, the song, I'm sorry, where all four of them sing, you know, you wanted the best, you got the best type thing. And they all sing on that. And I, this album, you know, I feel like the songs, some of them, you know, kind of uh, follow a theme of, you know, hey, we're, we're back together. We love mm -hmm. our fans. So we, yeah. the, the original four got back together. Of course, you know, then you find out later on down the road that, well, you know, Ace and Peter's involvement in the album, uh, you're not quite sure how much they actually played on the album. Uh, the four of them weren't getting along as well as they like to portray at this time. They got they got back together. They did the, the reunion tour in 96, uh, and then they made this album. And then they toured off of that, uh, the, the Psycho Circus tour. Um, and then they, which evidently they started, the cracks started showing. They started having some problems there starting when they made the album because, you know, I, I think it's Bruce Fairborn uh, produced that record mm -hmm. and maybe he didn't think Peter's playing was up. Because, you know, Peter was not the best drummer uh, by this time. Okay, he'd lost some of his skills from not playing for so many years. And he wasn't, you know, he, he was never going to be a, a Neil Peart or anything like that. But, you know, he used to be a decent drummer and he had kind of lost some of that. And... Um, they, you know, it. They they portrayed it as, it, and it made you feel like that as a, as a fan at that time. And it's you still have that feel from it, even though you know that some of it is a facade. It gives you a feeling of a unit, and all those songs yeah. are, you know, like you know, Gene songs. I, I love all all Gene songs. Yeah, on there. Definitely, to me, this is a very strong album for Gene. Yeah, um, some of his best writing, I think. Um, for sure, he's got quite a few songs on there, and you know, obviously, with with Ace having one song, Peter having one song, it's, there's ten ten tracks total, um, so it's pretty heavy on um, Gene and Paul. Um, but you know, for all the shortcomings or some of the shortcomings that we mentioned here, it's still overall a great album. I would say if you're a Kiss fan, um, that maybe you you didn't like anything in the '80s, '90s, you you like that classic Kiss from the '70s. Give this album a listen. I think you're gonna find um, at least a few tracks on here um, that you would really dig. So, um, Psycho Circus, that's my pick. Great album. Yeah, good deal. All right, Alex, what do you what do you pick for tonight? All right. Um, so I before my pick, I I just wanted to uh, kind of say, you know, obviously because of the age thing, pretty close in age, um, that Psycho Circus was obviously very big for me too uh coming out in the 90s uh we listened to it quite a bit so that was that was also you know that was right up there with me for albums that you know meant meant a lot to me which um you know which is what this is not our favorite album um but just what meant a lot so that was definitely up there um but another one that really meant a lot to me um actually i, I think meant a lot to both Brady and I, uh, growing up, just one that, an album that really resonated with us is uh, Dynasty. So I know, um, which, awesome album cover. Yeah, it's got yeah. that great album. <laughs> I love that album cover. It's, it's a great album cover coming back from the solo albums too. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, it's got the yeah. four of them there together, you know, they're definitely showing, hey, we did our thing, now we're back. Right. Um, so, obviously, uh, you know, we, we all know this album gets, gets some hate from uh, some KISS fans calling it the disco album and whatnot because of, well, specifically like the song, I Was Made For Loving You, which, yeah. um, you know, not not as uh, hard rocking, uh, you know, as a lot of other KISS songs still, still love that song. I think a lot of uh, KISS fans still like that song and, you know, a lot of uh, casual KISS listeners probably really love that song, which is maybe why some of the hardcore fans, you know, we don't yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. 
I, I you know what about that song uh even though it's like super short I love that little a solo and, and I was made for loving you I, you know it's just short and sweet but I, it's just you know I, I think yeah. it's cool if, yeah. if that was disco I could get into disco yeah yeah yeah, yeah, balls yeah, yeah that's what, like that yeah. yeah no kidding it's got yeah. disco influence for sure but it's still a, a it's a badass rock song I think the disco part that you're talking about mostly kind of came you know in the, the from Paul yeah, right and his writing on there but. um so but other other great songs on here um not to say I mean I, I love I was made for you but there was um a lot of great songs uh like x-ray eyes um great gene song that is that is up there with one of my favorite gene songs um you know of of all time obviously has tons but that's that is right up there with anything else um another thing uh actually i i didn't know and i i know it might make some hardcore fans out there mad if you're a hard if you're a really hardcore fan of the rolling stones i i'll be honest i did not know that uh 2000 man was a remake from the rolling stones but that song it's it fits perfectly i think on this album yeah. and mm -hmm. i i love that song you know and they you know he really um he really makes it his own right yeah that, ace, that song. ace decided to do that cover and i did you know like when i first heard it when i was a kid i didn't know that was, i didn't know for years that you know i never heard the rolling stones version and i still think aces is better than the rolling stones version you know but uh, yeah, I think I think Ace's vocals on 2000 Man is is Ace at his best. I think vocally that's one of his best songs. Yeah, cuz he only he has a limited vocal yeah. range. And uh if like like you said, this song I mean it seems like it was written by Ace, right? Oh, yeah, you know, you listen to the lyrics and stuff it's like that totally sounds like that's, something that's Ace would write. Yeah, yeah, that's a Space oh, Ace doing his song, man. Yeah. Sim it's like a it's a simple song. There's not like yeah. a, you know, there's not a ton in there um but it's it's just it fits fits this album i think fits the style so great great choice by him i think to you know put this in there um and uh let me see so got charisma on here dirty living which is uh i believe you said uh the it's the only song right on here that uh peter chris was yeah actually on. yeah they were kind of uh you know having issues with peter at this time uh his playing uh, th the funny thing is is the uh the producer that they got for this album which is uh vinny Poncier, or I, i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but he was the one that produced peter's uh solo album which i i never listened to that uh, but <laughs> pretty, pretty brutal <laughs> yeah. anyway uh kiss they decided to use that producer to make Peter happy, all right, because, you know, he was just discontented. He was, you know, always kind of a malcontent around this time. Uh, he was a producer of this album, and he himself said, Peter's drumming is just not good enough <laughs> for us to use in the studio by this time. You know, uh, Peter had, you know, had a lot of substance abuse problems around this time. And Dirty Living, which he sings, like uh, Kate, uh, you just said, is... The only is the only song he plays drums on. The rest is Anton Fig, who was from David Letterman's house band. So if you ever and I do remember listening to uh, like that some of these songs at first. I'm like, wow, Peter's really doing some different stuff. It sounds a little <laughs> on different. drums because you know he didn't have the internet back then, and right? you didn't know that to, that's not to know right. that it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, you know some other songs. You know, uh, hard times, magic love, uh, great Touch, magic. Or magic touch, magic touch. I was, I'm, <laughs> I'm already looking uh, too far down because uh, right after that it's uh, showing "Save Your Love," which is uh, what what ends the album. It's it's in a different order here on the album cover, but uh, ends with "Save Your Love." Awesome, awesome song. Great yeah. song. Save your love, yeah. I don't want it. Put it back on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just awesome. Yeah, it's kind of just awesome in your face song ends it. Um, honestly though, uh, I, I love, uh, sure know something. I know it's, uh, it's not as one of the, you know, 
awesome, awesome bass in yeah, that it's song. One of Gene's it's, best bass lines. I, I love that bass line. It sure knows something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Kind of gives the album, um, you know, different. You you have to have songs that are different, right, to really just fill out an album, give it some more depth. If every if every song on the album is just hard rocking like could be some like stadium anthem it, it wouldn't be an exciting album right you need some, yeah, some different things some and that's 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 something that gives this album uh diversity i think is that song and i i love that song it's um you know i get different than you know all the hard rock and kiss stuff but it's it's an awesome song so this you know this uh this album overall i i love this album like i said not not my favorite Kiss album. I would not, you know, I wouldn't put that up there as my number one album. It is an album that meant a lot to me because we listened to it a lot when we were younger mm -hmm. and it's something that made me start listening to more Kiss. You know, it's something that got me into Kiss and then, you know, obviously, like Brady already said, you know, both of our first rock concerts. So, but this is, this is definitely an album that really got me into Kiss. Cool. And that, uh, I think we're kind of showing here, you know, just different generations. Because I know there's some old school fans here that are hearing these guys' picks and they're going, oh my God. <laughs> Circus <laughs> Dynasty, what the These hell? are like <laughs> their dumbest albums or something. But that just goes to show you, you know, Kiss is a band that, uh, you know, maybe if you're my age, you know, you got into Kiss at a certain time. Uh, you know, you might have got into, like, okay, like my first thing was Destroyer. Uh, you know, when I was in grade school, and I heard that, and even at that time, I find out later that like some of the Kiss fans that they had at that time, they thought Destroyer was over the top. <laughs> you know, it was a Bob Ezrin produced album, and they're like, you know, oh man, Kiss is sold out. You know, blah blah blah. <laughs> even way back then, so you know, way back people, the beginning, already. <laughs> yeah, people come into Kiss for different reasons at different points, and then they go back and listen to stuff like. Both yeah. these guys said neither one of these albums is their favorite, but they mean something to them for some reason. Uh, and Dynasty kind of leads into my pick. Anyway, my pick is from 1982, Creatures of the Night. This is the remade cover where they put the band on there, where they put uh, Bruce Kulik on there this was uh, they redid this i think in 85 they re released it with this cover unfortunately i can't find my copy uh, i have it on vinyl somewhere and i guess i've lost it uh of the original creatures of the night which is you know still has ace even though i don't even know if ace plays on any of that album uh, <laughs> the original album cover is uh, cool though. yeah oh yeah much cool <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, i love the sure. original i love that you know it's got the lighted eyes of, of yeah. the band, you know, it's got, and it's got Eric Carr uh, in his makeup for the first time on a Kiss record, it's the only time, right? Because, uh, you know, after that they did Look It Up and they, and they took the makeup off. So that's the only album cover where you get to see Eric Carr in his Fox makeup. And, you know, it's great. It's blue and black. It's a great album cover. Um, and it's a great album. And the reason why it means something to me is because by that point, so like as I'm a kid, you know, like I say, I got into, uh, you know, uh, Kiss from Destroyer, and then from there I went back and, you know, got the other earlier albums, Alive and Just Kill, I don't know, all that. Uh, and then it was Rock and Roll Over, Love Gun, you know, which was even more raw than Destroyer. They do Alive 2, they have that great side four studio songs on there uh then they all make the solo albums right those are hit and miss jeans is a hit and miss album peters is I, I know some people love it but it's not for me uh paul and ace is great those are great solo albums and then this one came out dynasty came out that alex talked about and at the time uh when dynasty first came out i'll admit i was kind of underwhelmed by it as a kid. Uh, I was in junior high by the time Dynasty came out and uh, you know it was kind of like a lot of people who weren't your normal KISS fans liked I Was Made For Loving You. Okay it kind of went along with the, <laughs> of, of the music of the times and so there's a lot of people like you say something about you people oh yeah I like that song I Was Made For Loving You and as a 
you know, as a Kiss guy, you know, who's all, you know, into other hard rock stuff, you're like, ah, oh, you know, these you are. You don't the, like to hear that when they these say are the, that's the only Yeah, song these are the preppy mentioned. guys. These are the jocks <laughs> that are saying this kind of stuff, you know. So, you know, I mean, looking back now, I love Dynasty. Uh, at the time, I ended up liking it. It took me a while, but, you know, I'm like, yeah, it's definitely a little duck, right? You know, it, 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 it's a different thing, but I was into it. Uh, and then Unmasked came out, and that was super poppy. And Unmasked is another album that I appreciate now. I can go back and listen to it. But at the time when it first came out, I was like, God, what, what are they doing? You know, it's like they took some of the elements of Dynasty that maybe I wasn't as crazy about, and it's all over this album, right? <laughs> uh, the only good thing about it was it still had a lot of bass songs on it. So they did that. Uh, and really at that time, we're like, I, we, we didn't, you know, me and my buddies, we didn't even know where Kiss was headed. Then they did The Elder, which, uh, I'll admit, I like The Elder. Uh, I'm a fan of that album. I and, that. I really like that album. And when it came out, I mean, but it's a different album, right? It's a concept album with a stupid concept. Uh, I'll admit that. <laughs> and it's definitely got some weird things. It's got some strings, it's got some oboes, all this crap in some of those songs. But uh, it's got, it. you know, I don't want to get too much into that. Okay. <laughs> anyway. That's it, a different video. It did, yeah, it didn't go over well with the fans. I'll, I'll say that. I liked it, but it didn't go over well with the fans. So they come back with this bad boy, with Creatures of the Night, and it is a kick-ass hard rock album. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's not a lot of thinking going on here, right? Uh, it's not like, you know, high concept idea like The Elder was. This is like, all right, we got to get our fans back. You know, what are we, because by this time, I know from being in school, nobody gave a shit about kids anymore. Uh, Matter of fact, when he put this album out, people still didn't care, unfortunately, because, uh, you know, they had done more damage. Other bands had come along, you know, the people that used to like Kiss now like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, you know, stuff like that, and Saxon, whatever. Uh, so this album came out, great album, but it didn't really sell that well. Later on, it became a classic. Now it's considered a classic Kiss record, but at the time, it really wasn't. I told everybody about it. It was like the first Kiss album you could tell people for a while. No, man, go out and check this. And there were some rock, you know, people that were into rock did notice it. it unfortunately, it didn't do well overall. But it's important to me because it was a return to form for Kiss. I was able to tell other people, you know, hey, Kiss is back. You know, Kiss is back. Listen to them again. You know, they've got some great songs. Unfortunately, Ace, not on the album. Right, there are no Ace songs. Uh, this was also, it meant something to me because it was the first time I got to see Kiss live. I was too young to see him, you know, in the original heyday. And then they stopped touring in the United States for, for a few years there. And they came back with this. I, I'll admit, I saw him uh, at the Toledo Sports Arena. It wasn't even full. Yeah, you know, that place was not even, not even sold out. There were, you know, there was empty spots I could see. Uh, but it was a great show. It was their last show with makeup. Okay, this was the last album where they still did all the makeup stuff. Uh, unfortunately, like one or two days before we were supposed to go to the show, it was announced, Ace Frehley is no longer in the band. You know, I, I can't remember what the story was at the time. I think they said he got, he got in a wreck or something, uh, blah, blah, blah. They didn't even say that he was out. They just said, there's a replacement. There's a replacement for him, a guy named, well, first they said uh, Vinny Cusano, Vincent Cusano. It's, and then you find out later, oh, they make it Vinny Vincent. Now, Vinny's on the album. He plays some on the album. There's all kinds of people playing guitar on this album, playing lead guitar. Uh, but Vinny is on there, and he has some co-writing. This is what Vinny did for Kiss uh, on Creatures of the Night and the Lick It Up. He's got some great co-writing on here. Kiss's big hit off of this is I Love It Loud. He co-wrote that. Okay. You want to talk about highlighting that uh, the Eric Carr drum sound. Yes, that and that's the other thing that really, <laughs> yeah. thank you, that's the other thing that uh, made this album stand out was those drums. It's like, oh my God, they're huge. You know, it's a <laughs> just these huge drums. You got to hear Eric Carr in his glory. Eric Carr, the best drummer that was in Kiss. Yeah, no disrespect to Peter, but this album. You or know, Eric Singer. P Peter's, not, Peter's no longer here. <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. yeah, right. And this album kind of said, hey, I am the drummer for Kiss now, you know, and damn, you know, did he show it. 
It is great. This is just a hard rocking album. Uh, opens up with Creatures of the Night, right? What a great song. You know, you're hearing yeah. this, you know, that's just great. You know, that's, and that's metal. This album is pretty much a metal album, you know, yeah. and uh, it, it started out, it started out on the Elder, this like, you know, these really fast, heavy songs. They, they, they opened up with Yo, and here's Creatures of the Night, and they just kept that going uh, for a few years um, through Lick It Up and Animal Eyes and all that. But anyway, so you've got Creatures of the Night, Killer, Keep Me Coming, Rock and Roll Hell, Danger, I Love It Loud, I Still Love You, I Still Love You, one of Paul's coolest vocals, yeah. man. Uh, and it's just a, a rock blues song is all that is and he just he makes it he makes that with his vocals uh saint and sinner not the best song but war machine come on oh, that's, <laughs> song. that's yeah. a that's a great one and that ends this album and it, it ends with that you know when it, that noise you know, at the end that washing noise when you're like going something going down a drain i don't know uh it's just a great album uh, it meant a lot to me at the time because it, it was a return to form for Kiss. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of people noticed it at first. It took a while, uh, but that's that's our choice, our choices for tonight. And as you can see, they're all very different and for different reasons. And that's what's great about Kiss. I promise you, I will be doing other shows on Kiss. Uh, in different, you have to. In different form. Have to. Right. To, they justify a lot. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, because of the three of us, this is the format we went with. So, this is Physical Format Rock and Roll. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate anybody that watches this. And I would love to hear comments from you people out there, from you KISS fans. Or maybe some of you are, you know, borderline KISS fans. And you're thinking, eh, I'll give one of these albums a try if you don't know them. Please do. Uh, but comments would be great. What's the album that really meant something to you for some reason? And... If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, I'd love it. I'd really appreciate it. Until the next time, physical format rock and roll. We'll see you.